are minorities being too harsh on white people in 2023? There's a new online movement that tends to think so. So do they have a point? Or not? Oh, man, this is a complicated topic, Andrew. And it's probably going to be relevant in America for the next 20, 30 years. You know, we're talking about the vibe between the tribes. Mm. And uh, there have been a lot of minority YouTubers that are not white that have been getting like millions of views and having videos go hyper viral recently. Basically, I wouldn't say fully 100%, but like sort of defending white people, right? Yeah, they're basically saying uh, like, hey guys, we're we're always saying colonizer this, white people evil this, they're oppressor this, we're oppressor that. Maybe it's just too much. We're saying this too much and we need to back off. White people don't deserve it and it's really not the situation that you think it is. Now, whether or not you agree with this perspective, we are going to go over all the different levels of things that we've heard about this topic and then we'll kind of try to wrap it up with some really big picture questions at the end. If you guys are excited or interested by this conversation, please hit that like button right now. Let's talk about what we're doing to white people. The rising tide of racial hatred against white people in which there exists virtually no limit to what racial minorities can and do say about white people. I believe this is the natural outgrowth of a perverse ideology that teaches us that everything, every societal ill, is the fault of white people and that whatever prejudice acts we may inflict upon them does not constitute discrimination because we don't have the power to discriminate. Yeah, I mean, Andrew, this video, for example, got 1 million views in one week, basically asking minorities, what are we doing to white people? So we got to get into this because this is very, very interesting in the comments section. Andrew, of course, you have some people going, damn right, it's open season on whiteness, man. I have I feel attacked every time I turn on the mainstream media, man. Even the Golden Globes. I hate it. Uh, and then there's like rich elite white people who are like, oh yeah, you guys are a little bit jealous that we're the winners, huh? Well, you know, this is capitalism. And if you're not in first place, that's too bad. You know, we won the Hunger Games. And to the, the spoils do the winners go. Or to the winners do the spoils go. That's <laughs> Um, Andrew, there's also moderate white people that I guess were like, you know, gee golly, I get that people are mad that certain groups are rich in America and certain groups are poor and certain groups are middle class. But, you know, I just don't like how it's OK to like insult us. I, maybe I want to help it, but I just don't want to feel attacked all the time. Yeah. And there's a lot of unprivileged white people who are like, yeah, you know, man, it seems like this open season on white people is like pretty unfair. You know, I'm just a farmer. I'm a hardworking white person. I, I didn't get that much privilege growing up. Right, I'm right. just. My, my lineage is Irish. We didn't even have anything to do with slavery. In fact, the British were treating us like that, too. Um, of course, Andrew, there was even, like, people who were Asian, Latino, black, being like, you know, I'm a minority. I'm not technically, like, a white oppressor. But I feel like we're, we're just the, 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 the rising tide against them is becoming unfair. And just like we would, didn't like it how they treated us that way, we can't reverse it. Like, the bullied can't all to come together as a team and, like, bully the former bully right and then there's some perspectives that are trying to empathize with white people while acknowledging that th something has to be done like the road to compensation for the past wrongs is not a pleasant one but it's a necessary one right i would say that that's a moderate left way of saying it right um some people are also saying you know white people are definitely not all evil but they are still the ones in charge of the power structure and they need to be constantly called out so that they can be changed from the top down for example if us minorities are at the bottom of the power structure how can the puppets hurt the puppet masters logically how can that happen right it's kind of saying like hey guys if we punch up at white people it's not really gonna hurt them because we're just trying to voice our opinion and try to get it out there now um uh, even on the farther left side, a lot of people are like, whoa, white people viciously dominated and colonized the world for the past 400 years, and now they want to lean into the victim card? Oh, I am not falling for this trap. White people think they're oppressed because of some TikToks? Come on. And uh, there's one that's more structural, I guess, where they're like, hey, guys, white people still make up most of the people in this country, and they're definitely the people with the most money. So we don't want to miss them, piss them off, guys. It's like poking a bear. And if we poke the big white polar bear, it might just destabilize the boat that the, all the other bears are in the boat 
with the white polar bears. Why are we poking it? And then the last two are, hey, guys, you know, we're all just some sack of bones and flesh and blood. Like, all this tribalistic beef is stupid, man. We got to just stop looking at color and just look at this like as a meritocracy. We got to just go back to what you can do. Right. It don't matter who you are. You're saying that's sort of like a bohemian or I guess like hippie way of maybe yeah. idealistically looking at it. But, yeah, it would be just nice if it was like that. Guys. And then, of yeah. course, there's people and always bringing it back to, like, class consciousness. These people were, like, you know, like international studies majors back in college being like, you know that the only true warfare is class warfare. Mm. Basically, the global elites want to seed disunity between the lower and middle classes about tribalism, skin color, and phenotype, and let everybody fight it out. And then they're not whole time, they're not questioning this entire system of global capitalism that has all of them at the bottom and them at the top. There's only elites and non-elites, none of this color stuff. Yeah, and I would say, guys, at this point, you've heard these are the major perspectives here. Leave in the comments down below which one of these you relate to most. I know our channel, we have a range of viewers because we don't really take one side very strongly. So I think that there's going to be people on our channel who watch our channel that might relate to to all of these. And you know what a harsh reality is? In my opinion, guys, by the way, you guys can leave your own opinion in the comment section below. All of these... Uh, and some more than others have some valid argument to throw into the pot. However, it would depend a lot on what family you were born into, mm. what socioeconomic class you were into, and how much you take history into regards uh, and how much. And, and by the way, everybody has a different timeline in their mind about how they view like modern day situations created by right. historical context. Right. Yeah. Well, for example, just to, whatever you were just talking about at the end, it's kind of like, well, if my parents went through it. Am I going to carry on that hatred or that pain or that trauma or that history, right? Am I always going to take that into consideration every time I interact with a white person? Now, if my great-great-grandparents went through it, does that still count? Or if my ancestors from like a thousand years ago, like I guess how far are you going to go back is a question that people personally need to ask. Because right. it's not wrong. We do live in America. This is a relatively new country. I get it. And everybody's just trying to make it and live a life. However, history matters, right? Yeah. Or maybe it doesn't. I don't know. But anyways, guys, here are three major questions that you want to be asking yourself when having this conversation. Because not everybody is having these questions even as they're leaving their opinion on all these videos, right. Andrew. Right. Like, I don't know if people have considered these questions. Yeah, I, and I'm not going to lie, guys. I don't love these TikToks. Like, I'm not saying that I don't understand their perspective and I'm trying to... You're talking about the anti-white TikToks? Yeah, I just like, I don't think it's like great content. I think they're just, they're just almost like releasing something. They're just like, these are feelings and I want to put it out there in the world. And there's a little clout to come along with it too. You know, not to say that that's not a factor. But anyways, guys, let's talk about this because uh, number one, is it possible that it is more class warfare than race warfare? I because hear this argument and this is sort of sounds very smart, right? And it sounds like you read a lot more books than other people because obviously typically more blue collar working class people and the easiest thing to see is a visual phenotype right, right? right. differences in cultural food and rituals and but, stuff but like what's that. the flaw behind this well i think that there's something to it however the flaw is that in the way that america was constructed there is like almost like an unbreakable bond between class i mean socioeconomic status and race yeah. yeah, it seems like yeah, it. Yeah, <laughs> because of the way America is such a newish country, you know, 300, 400 years yeah. old, and the history of slavery, and the way that certain minorities were brought over to, like, uh, not get fairly compensated, obviously, as slaves and, and other things, indentured servitude. So that's the only part where it's like, yes, I think in a theoretical sense, class does matter more than race. Because, say, for example, Andrew Bronny James, son of a billionaire, LeBron, obviously, we all know LeBron. Super. He's growing up super privileged, right? Right. But then people are going to say, well, is he going to be privileged if he has a downside interaction with a police officer who doesn't know who he is or et cetera, et cetera. So it gets into these like hyper layered right. things. So I think that that's where it's like, yes, there is something that yeah. class is more important than race, but then also race is so interconnected with class. Now, I think the linkage is debatable on whether it's one to one or what the percentage linkage between class and race it is, right? Like, I think a lot of people are going to debate, well, it's linked a little bit or it's linked a lot or it's linked like one-to-one, -one, right. right? I don't we think don't anybody know. would deny that there's a huge linkage between class and race, there's right? If you just look at the macro so, statistics on any sort so of survey, they play out that are way. Are you saying I got to change my tune? It's not, race wars in America. I got to say, class wars in America. And then what if you, the second line was like, but then race and class in America are inextricably linked according to statistics. Every single study backs that up. Oh, man. Uh, all right. Point number two. 
David. And how should dominant groups historically, and obviously you're going to be looking at Anglo-Saxon people, Germanic people, whether that's Netherlands, British, German, whatever, you know, that zone. How should dominant groups historically over the last couple hundred years treat groups that have been historically oppressed or poor? Yeah. I mean, uh, that's a crazy way to put it, right? I mean, that's what we're referring to as far as the American context goes. I totally get it. In other countries, the the, the winner is is Russian or Chinese or, you know, whoever it is in, in know, any other country. You know us, man. This is what I always talk about, man. I like proposals, man. I like proposals. I like someone to come up with a plan and say, hey, guys, listen, white people... You guys are still at the top. Yes, maybe not all of you are born super privileged. But anyways, white people are at the top, guys. So can you just let us talk whatever crap we want to on TikTok? And then you guys just, this is, this is the payment. This is what we get to do. And then eventually we'll just chill out and everything will be fine. Or we need... X amount of money. We need money. We need fifty thousand right. dollars or two hundred thousand well, dollars from you each. You know, it's what tough I mean? because I think the people being emotional on TikTok, whether they have a point or not, obviously it's like it is insulting, right? I think that it, it's undermining the actual progress in two ways. One, it's undermining it because that person feels like they did something, but they just had an emotional release, even though it was driven by real trauma or what they feel like was trauma. Like they feel like they did something, but there's been no structural change. Right. And right. then number two, I guess it makes. People who are white or, I guess, white, sympathetic to that perspective, like, it hurts them. So then it makes them not want to enact change when somebody does come through with a real proposal. But, David, why should we care about what white people feel? Because they didn't care about what how we feel for decades. Kind of true. Yeah. On, on a large scale. I get right? that, right? There's a too, point man. There, so like I said, man, me and Andrew, perfect. we used to be— but, um, Dude, we have been around so many people. Like, when we were in business school— in college, uh, you have to test in a business school and do all these, get these referrals and stuff like that. Like, that was definitely more right-leaning. If you made me draw, you know, a spectrum out, it was like mm. at least one notch to the right. Yeah. And me and you actually hosted a spoken word poetry show um, that was almost like Deaf Poetry Jam. I would say it was like two to three notches left-leaning. Yeah. So we've been exposed to like both extreme ends of the you, spectrum as well as moderates on you, both ends of the spectrum. You know what I think there needs to do? There needs to be some type of like forced collaboration, kind of like school projects. You know how like you don't always get to pick your partners and then you got broken into groups and then you had to do something together and work together, even if it was that person in the class that you don't like. But like we need to be able to do that on some adult level because it feels like sometimes everybody gets into their echo chambers and then the hate breeds. And I don't think, but here's my one thing. The TikTok hate, white people out there watching, that's not like the worst hatred. I'm not saying it's I'll not. I have my feelings no, hurt by it. No. What do you mean it's not the worst? I'm Who not, are you to tell me it wasn't the worst? I'm not saying it's not insulting. I think it is insulting, but I just don't think it's that bad. It's not physical violence. Like literally like Asians to this day, we're getting like targeted by crazy deranged people, of course, but we are getting targeted in the streets. You know, for something that you has know nothing what it to do is? with us. I think it's a lot of white people who feel like the score was zeroed out and then yeah. they hear the insults on TikTok and they're like, how come this isn't getting taken yeah. down? But if I had done that about yeah. Asians, blacks, or Latinos, it would get taken down. That's structurally unfair. And they yeah. have to understand that there's a historical context, yeah. right? But yeah. then it's tough to say, right? Because if we got told that everything's supposed to be colorblind in public school, then I could see where they're coming from. That's why it's so complicated, guys. Yeah, I mean, listen, if it's hateful speech, it should be hateful speech no matter the color of your skin. All right, guys, uh, the third point is... Who is even white? Oh who my is privileged, David? I, who, I, who do you count as white? Well, it's on. crazy. Who do you count as white? But span non his You know, you always hear it, this non-Hispanic white. It's crazy because, white. like, uh, let's say, for example, we we're talking about the colonization of Latin America, Andrew. That was by dominant people from white-looking people from Spain, right? They don't look fully Anglo, but, like, like so the so let's say, for example, somebody is from Mexico, and they're white, Mexico, which, which is generally, like, the richer ones, right? So they're the white people of where they come from, but then they come to America, do they automatically become a minority, even though they're still just as white, I guess, theoretically European? But I think that's why they have that label non-Hispanic white. Right. You know, that's, that's, that's why it's so complicated. How come nobody ever talks about that? Like, on all the surveys, you have to mark, are you Hispanic or non-Hispanic white? You know what it is? I think in Canada, they do a lot more education about, like, are you Anglo? Are you Franco? Were you a Germanic? Were you a Scando? Were you Mediterranean, Italian, Greek, Portuguese? They, I notice in other countries, they actually split up their whites. But do you think, Andrew, that we should be more 
like break that down in America? Because why do we just have like one word for actually the largest single demographic in America? Yeah, because I, I think it is true. <laughs> That's so crazy. You know, it is minority. true. At one point in American history, Irish people and Italian people were both considered like colored at a time. Right, because they're Catholic and they're, they're technically non-Anglo, right? Because yeah, some of the Irish, they're like Celtic. But of course, now you would say almost Italians and Irish people, they pretty much have blended in and they kind of get like the white card. But, but, but would of. you uh, say they are not white Anglo-Saxon yeah. Protestants from the elite a Plymouth Rock? You know, we're talking about like land owning exactly, back to like the exactly. colonies days and manifest destiny pushing westward. And, and then there's like light-skinned people who are part white or part light-skinned something that like they look white, but they're not white and they don't identify and, but as white. But then they're like so 10% white, but that like, could have been like having a very dark history history about how they became 10% white. Right. Or, or are we just going to be talking about the waspy billionaire families? Like if we just want to point out the top hundred or like thousand families in America that are clearly white, that maybe benefited from the Atlantic slave trade, right? But then, right. Hey, hey, Benedict Cumberbatch, his family has some lineage of slave owners in the Caribbean, unfortunately, but- hey, And I think Edward what's, Norton what's did that show and he was a descendant of Pocahontas on one side and also a slave owner on another side. And somebody, I'm talking about another celebrity, they found out they were like- 5% African American on one side, but you couldn't see it visually. Right. Well, I guess these are all just, uh, these are tough questions to ask, but they are important questions to ask because like we said at the beginning of this video, this is going to be a conversation for years to come. Like all what of these Andrew, questions. What, a, what about Slavic whites, Andrew? If Luka wins MVP, which I think yeah. he will, Andrew, and then Jokic might honestly throw out his career. I think Jokic is going to win at least three. Yeah. Is that white privilege? Yeah. They're Slavic. Yeah. That's like a whole nother thing. They never even left that zone. I don't know. David, all right, let's wrap it up, guys. I want to see your comments down below. You guys let us know what you think about this conversation or this movement that's helping kind of defend white people and say, hey, minorities, back up, guys. It's getting a little too crazy. Or maybe it's not too crazy because I think there's the other side that maybe saying and that it just because people are yelling on TikTok, it doesn't... I don't know if that's something real, real yet. I don't know. It's debatable. I just wish that there was more constructive conversations around the tribal, the vibes between the tribes in America. And I get it that, you know, we don't feel like a lot of minorities don't feel like maybe that Anglo-Saxon people or people who identify as that were the best winners. Like, you know how there's a sore loser and then there's a sore winner? I would just like, I, I didn't want to be a sore loser. I wouldn't want to be a sore winner, even if we feel like, we had that done on us. Mm -hmm. But then at the same time, who am I to tell anybody else, especially somebody else who's like, yo, you guys are Asian. You guys didn't even see, you guys saw like a quarter, a 10th of it. You know yeah. what I mean? Compared to what we saw. So yeah, I don't know. You guys, it's <laughs> that's tough. why it's complicated guys. Why? That's why the videos taking the white side. If you're a minority, you get like a million views. Well, in, well that's in why it's easier to just say, Hey, stop everybody. Or Hey, open season on white people. Literally. Those are the two sides that are probably the most popular. What we're trying to discuss right here. It is the less, sexy middle part of it all but anyways let us know in the comments down below hit that like button we are the hot pop boys hopefully you found this discussion helpful maybe mildly entertaining as well and, and i just hope this i hope that as we move forward the next 10 20 30 years the vibe between tribes even if we can't come like to a serious like agreement agreement we could just like be chill we could be chill we could have the discussions in a you mean in a more constructive way i'm not saying i think we should have the discussions though all right, everybody, let us know in the comments down below. Thank you so much for watching the Hot Pop Boys, and until next time, we out. Peace. Peace.